everybody and welcome back to the Treehouse Garden. It's a gorgeous day today in Auburn, California, and I'm starting to prepare and plant my fall and winter garden. So I wanna showcase what I'm growing in my greenhouse and give you some tips on starting seedlings. I also wanna show you what I directly sowed in the ground so far. And I also wanna highlight a really cool tool that lets me direct sow small seeds like beets and radishes directly in the ground at the right spacing. So join me today at the Treehouse Garden as we start to explore and prepare for a fall and winter garden. So for me, there are two key components when it comes to starting seeds because seeds actually, they can be really easy or they can be really disappointing. And the key thing, first number one, is to start off with a good light soil. So I start off with this seed starting mixture. This bag is pricey. It's probably, I think, $22 for the bag, but the soil itself is super light and fluffy, so the little seeds don't have a hard time coming out. So that's really important, because if you use really dense soil, especially with some that has a lot of wood chips and things, your seeds are going to struggle. And sometimes the water can get stuck into that soil and you can even get some mold and the seeds can disintegrate. So starting off with a good seed starting soil for me is key. The second is when it comes to seeds, you want them to sprout quickly and you want to keep them moist and make sure they don't dry out. And so to, to do that, I buy these cell sheets they're little and you can see they don't use a lot of dirt which is important because I'm using soil that costs a lot and then the tray that goes underneath so once I plant my seeds in the cells I don't water from the top because then I'm gonna be moving those seeds around displacing them and making them unhappy so instead with a watering can I water underneath the cells and they absorb the water that they want from the bottom I also mist them on top with just a handheld squeezable sprayer and I do that on the top to make sure that they stay um, moist and they don't dry out. Once all the water has been absorbed from the bottom up, I no longer have to mist them every day. So I do that usually for about the first week until I see that the soil is continually uh, wet for the seeds. So really important to make sure to use a light seed starting mixture and make sure that when you plant your seeds, you have a way to keep them wet all of the time because if they dry out, they won't sprout. All right, let's talk about what I'm growing in the greenhouse. Talk about how their seedlings get leggy. And that means they've been in the cell tray too long. And as you can see, um, they're falling over and they're, they're leggy. <laughs> so don't worry, they're not lost yet. So you'll carefully pull them out of your seed tray. And I've done about half of this tray, you can see so far has been moved. And then I'm just gonna drop it directly into my little six cell pack and I'm gonna fill this up. And then I'm gonna place the dirt inside around the leggy part of the seedling. And before you know it, I'll show you, they perk right up and they start turning into solid plants. So let's go look at some that started leggy that are doing great now. Here are uh, two full trays of six pack cells of the broccoli rob from that master seed tray. And as you can see, they're starting to thrive, they're starting to get new leaves and establish themselves. So even though they were a little bit leggy and I got them into the next pot a little bit late, they're doing just fine and they're going to mature into good little seedlings to put into the garden. Have some Romanesco growing. I have some specialty lettuces. Most lettuce I direct sow in the ground, but these are really um, gourmet types of lettuce and I prefer to put them in individually so I don't have to thin them out. I have lots of purple cauliflower from Baker Creek. I tried a lot of their seeds this year. And I also have some bigger uh, broccoli plants that are looking great. I also have some endive frise specialty salads uh, mix starting to pop up as well as some beautiful radicchio. Um, they're kind of specialty, again, lettuces, so I like to start them individually so I don't waste the seeds. 
So when it comes to planting onions, and now is a perfect time to get your onions and your garlic in the ground, you have some options. So an easy option is you can go and you can buy the little bulbs that you put directly in the ground. Of course, you can also go to the nursery and buy the onion starts. Um, or you can purchase your own seeds that you direct sow in the ground or you start in the greenhouse. Um, they're pretty small, so they're pretty difficult to get right without having to thin them out. Or lastly, um, these are from Johnny Seeds. Um, instead of the little black onion seeds, you can get what they call pelleted seeds. So they're little seeds that are pelleted, so it makes it quite easy for you to put them directly in the ground in the correct spacing. So I decided this year I'm going to do all three um, types and see what turns out the best. Um, and I'm also going to show you in a little bit the seed setting tool that I have, which makes planting these little seeds really easy. All right, so let's go check out the spot where I planted four rows of onions and talk about the soil. On the way to the box, I wanted to uh, show you the silliest, dopiest birds that I have right now. Um, these are silkies that my friend Janet um, needed a home for because her girls were beating them up. And so I said, bring them to my house because I'm sure my ladies, right ladies, will be nice to the silkies, which did not happen. So these dodo birds, which have an entire garden to walk around and like to just kind of cuddle. Oh, they're gonna say hello. Can't even see their eyes, they're so strange. Anyway, they're my new little garden mascots. They really don't do much, but look like little fluff balls, but. If you have any ideas for names, let me know because I just call them my dodo birds right now. Hi ladies. So this is where I planted five rows of onions. Um, I meant to show you before I covered them up, but I forgot to make a video. So um, I wanna point out that this um, box, this soil is 50% sand and 50% compost. Um, and I got both of those at a a here in Auburn. The sand is really good for root vegetables because it makes them just plop out of the ground really easily versus trying to yank them out of a ground that's a little bit more compact. So this box looks shady right now, but it gets um, half of the day it gets sun and the rest of the day it's just pretty uh, shaded by the oak tree. But again, I planted some bulbs. So when you plant your bulbs, you just wanna space them out to be the size of the onion you want and the seeds the same. So we'll see and we'll watch the progress of these onions. A little hard to see from this angle, but I did add something to the garden box that I just showed you. And it is a bed metal headboard. I saw it listed on Marketplace for free, so I went and grabbed it. And today I'm going to plant some beans. Um, to grow up the headboard. So this should be really interesting and it adds a little whimsy to the garden. I thought about painting it a color to give it a little pop, but I ended up just putting it in there natural. But um, again, it was free and it kind of adds a little architecture to this garden box. Today, I'm gonna tell you what kind of beans that you can plant and we'll actually plant the headboard. So <laughs> I have to show you this gem has decided that my two little dodo birds there, my silkies, he, I think he thinks they're puppies and he feels it's necessary to guard them when they're in the garden. Jem, can you say hi? Jem. Hi Jem, are you guarding your babies? Anyway, I shouldn't call them dodo birds, but that's what I call them right now until I get a better name. Here's my handy dandy seed uh, setting tool. I was at the farmer's market here in Auburn and I bought this beautiful bunch of parsnips that were like perfectly sized. And I asked the vendor, how do you get your parsnips to be so perfectly the same size and the right you know, length and all of that? And he told me about this little tool that I bought online. It's a little over a hundred dollars. It comes with a variety of discs so depending on what type of seed you're planting, you'll decide what kind of disc. There's for sunflower, spinach, uh, radishes, kale. So you'll pick the correct disc, slide it into the machine, pour the seeds in, and then plant your row. I almost forgot, we're gonna plant that bed frame that I got for free off of Marketplace. So let's go put in um, some snap peas and I'll show you just how easy uh, beans are to plant and to grow. 
So I found there are three types of beans that grow really well and prolific in our area in the fall and the winter. And the first are the sugar pod uh, peas. These are great in stir fries. You can even blanch them in boiling water, throw them in a water bath, freeze them, and then seal them up or can them, which I do both with. So you can have them in the summer when you might want them in fresh stir fries. Uh, the next up is an all favorite snack, the sugar snap pea. Um, these love to grow vertically and like a lot of fertilizer. We'll talk about that once they start growing. And then lastly, you have shelling peas. These guys are a lot of work, but you just harvest a bunch, sit and watch your favorite movie or TV show, and you just shell away. You can also freeze these by blanching them in hot water, throwing them in a cold uh, water bath, throwing them in the freezer on like a cookie tray on a single layer, and then putting them in a canning jar for the freezer or in a food saver bag. So you will have a lot um, that come in the winter and the fall, so much that you want to share with your friends and neighbors and um, save the surplus for the summer because who doesn't like a fresh pea soup or salad with fresh peas in the summer. So I dug a little um, trench underneath the bedpost. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of snap peas. I probably could have done half, um, but I just kind of pack them in there and they seem to do fine. The last thing that I'm going to do is sprinkle some lighter soil on top of them, top it off with some fertilizer, and then I'm gonna water them in. All right, so the job is done. I sprinkled on my light soil and I topped it off with some 1515 fertilizer and I'm going to lightly water these in. You don't want to just dump a bunch of water on them because you'll maybe misplace all the seeds and they're already close enough together as it is. So I'm going to use my wand and sprinkle them with water and put in my stake so I know what I planted and voila, hopefully we'll have snap bees before you know it. Thank you for joining me today at the Treehouse Garden. A fall winter garden is really actually easy to grow. Once you plant it, you can kind of forget it once the rain starts. Just watch for pests and make sure to fertilize. Um, it's a great time to get in your onions and garlic, your root vegetables, carrots, beets, radishes, parsnips, turnips, and don't forget those leafy greens, your spinach, your kale, your gourmet lettuces, arugula, the list goes on. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing what you're growing in your garden. Thanks for joining me and don't forget to seed the day.